Andrew McCart, IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm here with the new Commonwealth lightweight champion, Gavin Gwynn. Gavin, I'll let you just explain to me what just happened in there. I can't even speak. Like it's like, as I just said to you, know, I'll probably start crying upstairs. Like it just means the world to me. It was a, it was a, I couldn't, I couldn't lose this fight. It was a no going back for me. I had to win this fight. And you could see I put everything, I put everything into the camp. I didn't stop, didn't stop going forward. And then K. Wally was throwing back. I just was relentless, and I just put it on him from the start. And I started cut, cutting him up, and yeah, and uh, I think he got to him in the end. The, the, the fight, the fight itself. I mean, you were relentless. You said to me as well as we were walking up the stairs there that you this, you weren't going to get denied. This was your time. I mean, and if you didn't win this fight, then there was nowhere else for you to go. So. You must be elated and at the same time relieved, I suppose. Yeah, a bit of relief more than anything because I put so much, so much into the past two camps, well, the past three camps really, um, and just to fall short uh, against Cordina and then against Tennyson. So this just is, this is just extra special not winning this belt. puts me, puts me right up in the top ten, back in the massive fights. I just can't wait to get some. I want to fight again now. I'm buzzing, man. Yeah, it's comedy. That, that's what a title does to you. It's it's great, like what a so what a feeling, like I'm I'm speechless, I don't know what to say. Yeah. I wanna talk about the fight then. Uh, let's talk about the first incident was the the cut at the back of your head. Now it was stripping all the way down your back, it looked like something serious has happened to the back of your head. It was obviously we watched it back on IFL TV, uh, me and Sheldon and it, yeah. it was an elbow. As you went to talk to he went for a shot over the top and he's pulled his arm back and elbowed in the back of your head. Isn't that isn't that serious? Is it okay? Yeah, it's fine. Um, I think I just had two stitches in it. It's um, it's one of them things. You go boxing, you're gonna get hit now. Not in the back of the head, though. No, in the back of the head. But it was my fault. I was going low, and as he as he as he was throwing the shots, I was like come under and hit the back of his elbow, sort of thing. So my fault as well as his. Like um, he was cut up. He was marked up in the first round. Um, um, went back to the corner, and Tony was like, right, we'll jump on him, cuts, and I will open him right up. And uh, make him quit, and that's what we done in the end. Yeah. Was that the game plan, you and Tony and, and Chris, to, to to make him quit, to just be relentless and just put it on him and just non-stop? I know, I know, I can do twelve rounds at a stupid pace, like with middleweights, with big people, massive compared to me. I'm doing in sparring. You, uh, nearly all my fights, you see how I got how, how a pace I set. Like I'm a fifteen round fighter. Like I'd 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 enjoy it if it was fifteen rounds and not twelve. Like I'd probably get more stoppages as well if it was fifteen rounds, but. Yeah, um, I think I do carry a bit of power, and you've seen it today. But then I was just, I got him out there and got the job done against a, a top-ranked fighter. A fighter, um, I think he was in the six in Britain in the light welterweight division, and six or seventh in the in the lightweight division. And I got him out there, got the job done. Were you surprised at that in the seventh round when he turned his back? Was it? Did you think that this was sort of like I had him here, and it was because of the, obviously the relentless pressure that you put on in the fight? Uh, I think it was in the fourth round. Um, I sat back down on the stool and I was seeing, I was looking over and he was all cut up, and you could see in his face he didn't he didn't want it. Um, and everything he was hitting me with, it wasn't phasing me. He was hitting me clean, and I was just walking through him and throwing my own shots. I was just being relentless with it. Um, I knew he was going to crack. Um, yeah, and uh, that was game plan really. And sold down to Tony and all the hard work we've been doing. Like we put, we had we've had two fights in lockdown now, and we've we've worked out. Absolute bollocks off. Sorry, the language, but we have had, we've put so much work in, um, and to get a win now is, is a big, big boost for Wales more than anything. Um, Wait a minute, you beat us in the rugby, so settle down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You scored by one point. You're lucky. Yeah, but, I, I was just going to say, um, you were playing the better rugby as well, so <laughs> we were lucky on that. But uh, it was no luck tonight. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Well, let's talk about then. I wanted to go back to the Joe Cardina fight and the Tennyson fight. I mean, you fought for that title against Joe Cardina. The British title came up short. Tennyson, you fought for the British title, came up short. Third time lucky. Yeah, um, I think with the Joe Cardina fight, it was just the ability. He was he was sharper starting off. I think I was getting into him the middle rounds. It was the first big fight I've ever been in, like um, in the O2 on a. Uh, box office card. It was um, it was a bit of a surreal experience, but I think I handled well, handled it well and boxed well. And then the tennis and fight, I thought I was winning. Um, just got caught. He's he's unbelievable puncher, and I think he'll go on to win a world title. So that's no disgrace there, like losing to someone like that. So and then winning this tonight, I, it, it was no. I wasn't going to get beat tonight. You've got to chuck two people in there. 
trying to hit me tonight. I wasn't. I would have put them both away. That's that's how I felt going in there. That's Tony. I was busting this morning to fight. I just wanted to get in there and get the job done. Now. Um, yeah, you're not in a bad division, are you? The lightweight division, domestically and yeah. geez, at world level. I mean, it's probably the hottest division right now. <laughs> how excited are you to be in the 135 pound division? I can't wait to fight again. As I just said downstairs, get me back out as soon as possible. Um, but I know Maxi Hughes is boxing um, yeah. Paul and Julian for the British, so maybe I have a defence of this, and then we can get that on may maybe later on down the year uh, for the British Commonwealth title. I know um, Leeton, um, MTK, they, they put, a, put on a fa fantastic show here today, so I'm sure they'll um, get us get us another another shot at the, the British title. Yeah. Mark, you, you mentioned that fight, your thoughts on it and uh, who, who wins and your prediction on that fight? I really rate uh, Maxi Hughes, like um, his last win, um, name's gone up my head. Uh, Korachov, Dubai. Yeah, 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 that's right. Um, so he's, he's, he's come off a couple of wins, I think he's, I think he beats and Paul. And Carroll back in. Uh, yeah, 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 but that's, his, uh, that's not his weight division, it was up, it was up at lightweight when he boxed him, but... Um, yeah, I think he's he's boxing well at the moment, and uh, I think it'll be a great fight between uh, him and Paul and Junior. But I think I think Max Hughes has been in the bigger fights. I think he just wins, just nicks it on points. Um, makes for a bigger fight for us maybe later on down the line in the year, like um, maybe towards Christmas time. I get a defence of this now in a couple couple of months, and um, yeah, and we'll get a British Commonwealth title fight at the end of the year. So, yeah. See, when you lost against uh, Cordina and Tennyson, did you ever think? This would come around for you. Did after the Tennyson fight, would you like? Did you ever think that you'll get another shot at this uh, title or any title? Um, to be fair, no. That's just down to my management, uh, Chris Saniga of, of um, Saniga. Chris is relentless. I'll give him that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and they know. Um, my head's gone blank. Um, I just. Would you get a shot at that? Oh yeah. Um, it's it's all down to my management team. Um, just keep on. Keep on pest, pestering the promoters, and uh, I knew they knew I'm at that level as well. I'm 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 top of top ten in the Britain, so they make for the 50-50 fights and for the telly fights, and uh, I just kept on training. I didn't didn't stop believing really, and uh, it paid off tonight really. Final word for people watching back home on IFL TV, and obviously Wales in general watching you tonight. Uh, just a massive thank you to everyone that tuned in, and to my boy, I got it. I finally got it. Yeah. It's a nice belt, it's a nice toy, yeah. nice toy for your boy. That, yeah. That's it, daddy's coming home with a nice yeah. new toy. So, um, Gavin, pleasure to meet you. I remember all these years ago in Cardiff when I interviewed for the first time. Yeah. Um, and now, look, you've got a title in the next interview I chatted with you. So, yeah. I mean, onwards and upwards, champ. Definitely, 100%. We we'll get a European title next, all the British, innit? You hear that, Chris? <laughs> yeah, you hear that, Chris? <laughs> European title next, mate. Bring it on. <laughs> Bring it on. Gavin, well done, my man. Thank you. Thank you. Nice one. Thank you very much.